Nine o'clock on Tuesday, June 13th, 2023. This is the meeting of the Iroquois County Board. All here. Barron. Here. Vince. Here. Bowers. Here. Pro. Present. Ducat. Geiger. Here. Hughes. Here. McGinnis. McTaggart. Yes. Awful. Here. Sure. Yep. Watts. Whitlow. Here. Williams. Here. Zumwalt. Present. Mrs. Awful. Yes, good morning. Uh, we have today Pastor Darla Holden from the United Methodist Church from Watsika and Milford and Woodland. Well, good morning, everyone. It's great to be with you again. Let us pray. Well, gracious and loving and all-knowing God, we come here this day, and first of all, God, we give you thanks for the rain. That is true proof that prayer does get answered. So let it uh, fall on our crops and our, our areas and our grasses and let it grow and just bring out your beauty that you have created. So God, as this board has gathered here today, I ask that you be with each and every one that they have the that they are instilled with the knowledge and, and decision making that they need to do for our county and for not only for our county but what it affects our county affects everyone around us so god give them the communication skills that they need to speak and and listen to whatever needs to be brought before this this body protect and guide in each every one and it is in your name i pray amen amen, amen. <laughs> of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. You all have a copy of the agenda in front of you. Are there any comments regarding the agenda, Mr. Burns? I'd like to move the finance report about policy and procedure. Okay. Is there a second? Mr. Crow. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? That motion passes. Next would be approving the minutes from the May 9th, 2023 session and the special session on May 24th of 2023. Motion to send to everybody. Do we have a motion to approve those? Mr. Williams. Second by Mr. Hughes. Are there any questions or comments regarding those minutes? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That motion passes payroll. We have a motion to approve the payroll, Mr. Zumwalt. Second by Mr. Williams. Any questions or comments regarding payroll? Seeing none, will the clerk call the roll, please? Barons? Yes. Benz? Yes. Bowers? Yes. Crow? Yes. Geiger? Yes. Hughes? Yes. McTaggart? Yes. Awful? Yes. Sure? Yes. Whitlow? Yes. Williams? Yes. Zumwalt? Yes. Alt? Yes. Okay, do we have any public comments this morning? I would like to introduce myself. Come on, Tyra. Uh, my name is Tyra Ebert, and I am the Chief of Staff for State Representative Jason Bunting. I am from Iroquois County, born and raised, and I am currently raising my family here in Iroquois County, so I think this county is fantastic. Um, I am primarily working out of the Watsika office, um, usually four days a week, and then I do go over to Dwight one day a week. So I'm available anytime. Anytime you guys need any help, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'm going to give each of you one of my cards, so if you have any questions, need to email me, you have that available. Thank you. Welcome. It's a lot easier. Oh, I'm Ashley Laurent. Um, I'm with RPC uh, Workforce Development right here in room 109. Um, we have quite a few things going on right now with workforce. Um, right now, we are trying. We are accepting applications for all ages. 
but definitely our biggest push right now is 16 to 24. Um, we're looking for kids that have dropped out uh, within the age of school, but they finished, but they're not going to post-secondary yet. So they can be 18, they can graduate, but not signed up for college for the fall because maybe they're worried about funds or something like that. Um, they may be juvenile or adult justice system, a homeless, pregnant, or parenting, an um, individual with a disability, or low income. Uh, right now we have five seniors that graduated from high school this year, six will that will be moving up to seniors for 2024, and three of the five seniors are going to post-secondary school in the fall. All of them, I believe, are going to KCC, actually. Um, I started a job club with the in-school youth in March, and more than half of our youth showed up and were present. We discussed job, work, job ne networking, resumes, job interviews. I created PowerPoints and engaged the youth, discussed with them on each other on the topics. And in May, I had two out-of-school youth also attend. Since February, we've had four new enrollments. Uh, all for being ages 20 to 24. Two of them are enrolled at KCC for CNA. One took a CNL or CDL and has met course and passed. And one is going to do work experience to gain more skills at the work, workforce at WGFA. Eight of the in-school youth are doing summer work experience. We have them working at the Watsika Library, VA Assistance Office, TND Metal, IMH, Riverside, and Bertrand's Farm. For the adults, um, our application menu again is open. It's open June 5th to July 28th. Um, for an adult to be eligible, they must be eligible uh, with the service, selective service, which I'm sure most of you know what that is. Um, but they have to, so if they're a male, they have to be in the selective service and they have to be 18 years old, 18 years or older. Um, after meeting the above, then they should be either public assistance or low income individuals. And then they can also, there's dislocated workers. Um, we can get them, uh, uh, displaced homemakers, veterans. There's all different types of things that we can get somebody approved for. So it's not just low income. Um, we have six of our adults, a participants enrolled in continuing education program. There are programs such as nursing, computer tech, and paralegal. Two of the adults completed their training program um, certificates in CDL and CNA this, this May. I have been working with our Iroquois County Sheriff Prezee to start an inmate program. Each inmate that is interested in giving is given a folder with orientation on what Iroquois County workforce can do for them and when they have re-entered society to better their future. Currently, the jail has these folders and information and worksheets to complete. I will see them when they're completed and discuss them with the next steps, what it's going to be when they re-enter society. Um, as for outreach, I will be attending the county board meetings every quarter. Uh, the office is open Wednesdays and Thursdays, 9 to 12, otherwise posted on the door. I am available by phone, um, 830 to 430, Monday through Thursday. We'll also make appointments in the afternoon. I have been visiting or email, emailing each town in Iroquois County. I place flyers that would be seen by potential one-stop or trainee clients, such as post office, libraries, grocery stores, convenience stores, and local eating establishments who have a board up to hang flyers. In March, I attended the WCHS Career Fair. We had six students sign up for my presentation. They were eager to learn information about the program. In May, I attended ECICAA Health Fair, which is our East Central Illinois Light Heat Program. Uh, health Fair located in Watsika, and we shared our information. July, we will be present at the county fair, and we will bring the mobile workforce van. And then we'll also be at the Harvest Days in October and bring the mobile workforce van. Um, in March, we had a participant successfully complete certify with his CDO at the 160 Driving Academy in Parkland. He is now currently employed at the American at Ameren in Gilman. In May, we had another CDL driver complete the program and obtain his HAZMAT certificate. He has been talking with HFS Heritage about employment. Also in May, we had another participant complete the CNA course with KCC and is currently employed. 
at the Peerview Nursing Home. In September of 2023, paralegal student will be completing her degree from Chicago State University. One youth just completed his spring wax and said, yes, I had a great time working for the dietary. I, it was fun. I have a new friend that I made from working at the dietary. He sco scored all threes and fours on his performance evaluation filled out by the dietary supervisor at IMH. Um, I did bring flyers and I'm gonna set them on the back table. Basically, they are hanging up by my door, but it's the youth need that we're needing youth and um, yeah, and this is our normal flyer for the office. This just basically says what we do. And then this one is the open application for Ju July, June 5th to July 28th. Any questions? Have a great day, guys. Okay, are there any other public comments? Uh, we'll on to the chairman comments. Your attention today, I believe many of you are aware that Dan Clover Morgan passed away last week. Dan is somebody that has served the county almost all over the world in public. He was a state senator, state representative, former county board chairman, former chairman of the Republican Party, and he's currently the mayor in Ohio. He sent flowers on the county board to the services for his mother, which are being held this morning. If anybody would like to send a card to Shane, you can see me after the meeting and I can give you the address and if you want any other information you might need. So, just wanted to call that attention to everybody. We'll move on to outside organization reports. Any Good morning, Chairman, members of the Iroquois County Board, and guests. I'm Angel Crawford, the Executive Director with Iroquois Economic Development Association. Here is the item news for June. Last week, I had the pleasure of attending the Illinois Economic Development Association Summit in Champaign. During the summit, not only did I reconnect and network with colleagues throughout the state, there was a multitude of economic topics we learned about, like the Illinois Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity, or DCEO, is hearing the following from companies looking for building sites. Number one, companies do not want to wait for infrastructure building out and are looking to be operational in 12 to 24 months. Number two, they are aware of equipment supply changes, change issues existing. An example is utility transfer transformers are on back order, but want to minimize site preparation delays. Number three, they are looking for sites anywhere from 10 to 20 acres up to 400 plus acres. How can Iroquois County position ourselves for success? Site readiness, <clears throat> excuse me, which includes, as we know, infrastructure all the way. Number one, water and sewer. Number two, utilities. At least planning and knowing what, what the site is capable of. Number three, preliminary environmental investigations. Number four, local zoning. Number five, registering sites with Iroquois County, Ir Iroquois Economic Development Association. Number six, discussing around local support, discussions, I'm sorry, discussions around local support like local incentives and property tax abatement planning. There were numerous updates on DCEO programs that will help existing Iroquois County businesses and new businesses coming to the county. In 2024, look forward to new federal grant support programs, a new back to business new biz program, the Illinois Grocery Initiative, the new office, this is a big one, the new office of rural economic development. And this is going to be very good for us, I think. It's, it really is. The new office of outdoor recreation, new 
rebuild downtown and Main Street grants, a new minority-owned business program, and continued Climate and Equitable Job Acts, or CJA, implementation, which is pretty much green jobs throughout the state, plus much more, as you can imagine. I was glad to connect with such great people, and as we learn more about these programs rolling out, we will be glad to share this information with local businesses, local organizations, area chambers of commerce, and, of course, county officials. In closing, I recently spoke with the Iroquois West Superintendent Angelo Likas about how the Education for Employment programs are being developed at Iroquois West and what exciting news he has to share with us that has happened in the 2023 school year. He let me know that during the school year, they invited over 22 local business owners to talk during their entrepreneurial class about what their business does and what it takes to run a business. And I've listed this and I've actually sent it out to everyone. So hopefully they will um, take a look at the different businesses that have participated. And I know that this is happening with a lot of different schools and it's, it's pretty exciting that our kids, and not only our kids, but we are learning about the businesses in Iroquois County. It's pretty neat. I, I'm really excited about it. <clears throat> Superintendent Lika said they were thrilled to receive funding from a grant from Gilman Women's Club to take approximately 40 business students to the Illinois State University to tour the College of Business. He was excited about the new building being built to create additional learning space which will include a fitness room that would be great for PE, health class, and athletic training. Also, they're building additional outdoor restrooms so everyone will not have to ask for access to the main high school building during outdoor events. The students have been busy with projects like creating and selling All Roads Lead Home merchandise, which includes calendars, custom Christmas ornaments, keychains, and t-shirts that have pictures taken by the students from each of their own hometowns. Pretty unique, very unique, actually. They even sold pumpkin pie at the playoff football game, donuts for Valentine's Day, and participated in the Iroquois West Trunk or Treat event for Halloween. Of course, they want to support all Iroquois West teams by selling numerous Iroquois West hats, beach towels, socks, dog bandanas, so everybody get them now. <laughs> and Nike Apparel. Finally, the biggest. The students came together to show their most meaningful support by raising money to benefit a local high school student who received a heart transplant. The faculty at Iroquois West is excited about the 2024 year, school year and truly appreciates all the, all the students and parents' support in these programs. All there's left to say is, Go Raiders! Are there any questions? Right here. Yes. Who's the vendor for all that product? Is it a local vendor? That is a good question. I can ask the superintendent. There are some local vendors. I would, I, I would think it would be local, but that is, I will definitely follow up on that. Definitely. I mean, that's that's what it's all about. Very good. I agree. Thank you. For more information on these topics I've discussed, please call the Iroquois Economic Development Association office at 815-432-0072. And thank you for your time. Do we have any other outside organization reports this morning? Seeing none, we'll move on to the report from the finance Mr. Chairman and members of the County Board, your committee to whom was deferred finance IT would beg leave to submit the following report on matters before them. Your committee met at the Administrative Center on June 8, 2023 at 9 a.m. Members present were Barons, Alt, Bowers, and Geiger. Michael McTaggart, Chad McGinnis, and Scott Watts were absent. Also present, County Board Chairman John Schur, Finance Manager Jill Johnson, Sheriff Clint Frizee, County Clerk Brian Suver, Treasurer Kurt Albers, Bernie McCarty with area-wide, 
Compass Insurance, and Susie Werner with Homestar Insurance, and City of Wapsica, Alderman Barry Marcier. The meeting was called to order. It was moved by Doug Geiger and seconded by Paul Bowers to approve the agenda. Motion carried by a voice vote. There were no public comments. Susie Werner with Homestar Insurance reported she pulled the latest report from Blue Cross Blue Shield and our medical loss ratio is at 107%. We do have five high claimants right now. Werner is waiting to hear from Blue Cross Blue Shield about whether or not these are active claims. <coughs> this high medical loss ratio will affect our renewal rate. City of Watsika Alderman Benny Marcier addressed the committee about the annual recycling event. In past years, City of Watsika and the county have split the cost of the event. Last year, approximately 20,000 pounds of electronic recycling was collected at a cost of $9,357. The event is scheduled for September 9, but the location has, been, has not been decided. It is moved by Bowers and second by Geyer to participate in the electronic recycling event with the City of Watsika and split the cost. The roll call vote was taken. Motion carried. The committee discussed the resolution to extend the circuit clerk's audit six months. County Board Chairman John Schur explained the resolution was presented to the Judicial Committee for their approval as well. The circuit clerk's audit deadline is May 31st, but cannot be submitted until the county's audit is complete. Under advisement from the county's auditors, an extension is being filed for six months. It is moved by Geiger and seconded by Bowers to approve the resolution extending the circuit clerk's audit six months. Motion carried by a voice vote. Bernie McCarty with area-wide provided backup internet options as follows. Mediacom $399 per month with $199 installation fee. Connexus $349 a month with $250 installation fee for three years. $299 a month with zero installation fee for five years. McCarty said he recommends a five-year contract with Connexus due to their upload and download speeds. County Clerk 3 and 2 were noted her office must remain on ICN due to security for election purposes. McCarty will research backup internet options further. The Negotiations Committee and members of the Bargaining Unit for the Corrections Officers have come to an agreement on their contract. It was moved by Bowers and seconded by Geiger to approve the Corrections Officers' contract. Roll call vote was taken. Motion carried. The department heads gave their monthly reports. They are as follows. Finance Manager Jill Johnson reported she spoke with Hope Wheeler of Clifton Larson Allen regarding the audit. They are reviewing health department reimbursement expenses. Johnson is in the process of sending out budget hearing schedules. Budget hearings are currently scheduled for July 25th and 26th. Lastly, a transfer of $1,000 was made to the Veterans Assistance Account to cover the deficit. An additional transfer will need to be made until their funding comes in and the funds can be paid back over the course of a year or whatever time frame is determined. It is moved by Geiger and seconded by Bowers to approve the interfund loan of $6,000 from the general fund to the Veterans Assistance. The roll call vote was taken. Motion carried. Treasurer Kurt Albers reported they are waiting on the multiplier from the state before tax bills can be printed and mailed. A revolving load fund application was received from Watsika Ford. Sheriff Clint Perzee reported Corrections Officer Blazy graduated Corrections Training in May but did not pass the state test. He was scheduled to retake the test this month but submitted his resignation on June 7th. Deputy Reichenberg is in PTI as of May 8th and is scheduled to graduate August 24th. Deputy Ravens is progressing through field training well and will be transitioning to his training on night shift this week. Deputy Heron resigned for personal reasons and took a position with the health department. A deep clean of the jail is being scheduled with Sir Pro and Perzi is planning on this being an annual cleaning. The last new squad truck is almost finished with lights, etc. Perzi applied for two grants for a mandatory five year upgrade of ballistic vests for the patrol. The total cost of new vests is approximately $33,000 with heavy rifle plates. Perzi gave an update on the telephone upgrade for the jail sheriff's office, stating the wiring is run and equipment is installed. County Clerk Breen Suber reported 
They have not received the multiplier from the state, but hopes to receive it within a few days. Schubert is currently working on budget preparation for FY2024. Discussion on starting wages for Iroquois County employees began last month and will be the main topic of budget hearing for FY2024. Johnson provided wage information for the committee members to review. Suver stated her opinion that deputy clerk positions should begin at a starting wage of $16 per hour. Also, the job types need to be reviewed. Current AFSCME contract states the housekeeping position and deputy clerk position making the same wage. The worksheet provided by Johnson shows a 20% increase effective December 1st with total payroll increase of 335000 If the starting wage increases to $16 per hour, the approximate payroll increase would be an additional $16,000. Further discussion on the matter will continue as budget hearings are held, which ensure said the committee also needs to consider other sources of revenue. The committee reviewed the claims. It was moved by Bowers and seconded by Geiger to pay the claims subject to county board approval. A roll call vote was taken. Motion carried. And as there was no old business, there was no new business, as there was no further business to come before the committee, it was moved by Bowers and seconded by Geiger to adjourn at 10, 19 a.m. Motion carried by a voice vote, all of which is respectfully submitted, and I move for its adoption. We have a motion on the floor to approve the Finance Committee IT report, a second by Mr. Williams. Do we have any questions or comments regarding the information in the report? Mr. Sproul? On the um, corrections officer's contract, um, there are no details or no copies of the contract for the board members to see. We're just voting on it blindly. I have the contracts right here if you care to renew them. Yeah. Would you like to do that? Yeah, I think we should pass it around and look at it before we go yes or no on it. Primary features in the contract are wage increase for the correctional officers for the first year of 4%, the second year at 3 and 1 quarter percent, and the third year at 3%. This is exactly the same increases that were approved recently in the contract for the deputy sergeants and lieutenants. In addition to this, there are three Correctional officers that serve as supervisors, and for this they get an additional amount of money every month. There was some controversy between the negotiations committee and the union over this, and it was resolved to where we will be paying these correctional officers an additional $175 a month. <coughs> Otherwise, all the rest of what's in the contract is the same as what the contract has been here before. <clears throat> Contracts have been signed by the union representatives and by the sheriff. I have not signed them until this board approves the contracts, which I'm hoping will occur today. decision. I want to thank what we've been involved in trying to do negotiations. 
is for those that have done it, it's never easy to do. <coughs> and uh, so thanks for people doing the negotiation. The, re the report says that a roll call was taken and motion carried was unanimous or was on the, on the contract. On voting on the contract. Yes. Was unanimous. Yes. 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 Any any time a roll call was taken, if it isn't unanimous, it'll say how many yetis and how many nays. Okay. Are there any other questions or comments about the, what's in the report? You can see there's a number two on your agenda, which we'll talk about as soon as we finish the action on the report for also to the veterans assistance part. But right now, everything that we'd be voting on is approving the correctional officer's contract Resolution extending the circuit clerk out of six months. Motion to participate in the electronic recycling event with the city of Watsika and approving the $6,000 loan that's already occurred from the general funds of veterans assistance. If there are no further questions or comments, the clerk will call the roll. Vince? Yes. Bowers? Yes. Crow? Yes. Geiger? Yes. Hughes? Yes. McTaggart? Yes. Awful? Yes. Sure? Yes. Whitlow? Yes. William? Yes. Zumwalt? Yes. Alt? Yes. Barons? Yes. Okay. Number two, I'm going to the finance committee is the Interfund Loan to Veterans Assistance. Jennifer Ingram is with us this morning along with the treasurer Kurt Albers. Uh, this is an unfortunate situation that developed, and it's probably through nobody's fault, maybe some misunderstandings whatsoever, but the account for the veterans assistance was overdrawn, and in order to prevent that, money was taken from the general fund to, to cover that. And projecting forward until additional revenues come in, there's, an, there's a total of $26,000 that, that's needed. It's going to be done by the county loaning the money to the veterans assistance program or people. If they will agree and we agree, we can have an, we can have this in, in a, a signed agreement type of form whereby it can be paid back by December 31st of 2024. It will be paid back primarily by increasing the levy. Heretofore, they've only levied less than one third of the amount that they're authorized to levy. So I think there's more than ample room in, in the levy process for them to recoup the monies that, that have occurred here. Furthermore, we've engaged in conversations with the treasurer and, and Ms. Ingram about Seeing to it that timely reports are prepared on a monthly basis in which all parties involved will be aware of what the balance is in the checking account and in the funds for that department. This is kind of a capsule of the situation that I'm giving you, so uh, I'm open to any questions or comments that you have. And as I said, Mr. Ingram is here and the treasurer are here, they can help in answering any questions that you have. So. Mr. Williams, you want to and, and the tax bills that haven't been printed yet, can that be added on that tax bills? What? That 
I assume they're not <coughs> coming from the tax bills, the real estate tax bills. Yes. Oh, so, so it can't be added for this permit. Right. Okay. We're, we're, yeah, we're talking about the levy that, that will be approved at the end of this year. Okay. That money wouldn't be collected until a year from now. Yeah, That's I, why I, I understand that. Yeah. Well, I will only be going until December 31st of 2024. Would that money become off once longer, right? Would that money become off once longer, right? Well, that's up. That's up. The money be requested if it's presented every year by the members of the system people. Are we going to be able to that? Presented to the council and approved by the board. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. 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 Yeah, that's well, any bodies like 377 seven board, 708 seven board, and so forth that, that also come through this board. So, so any of those levies can be discussed prior to being approved by the board. Okay. Right. Would it be better to be on the service or that's going to another year? Well, I wonder about that too. We do a lot of the December 31st. That was the date that he suggested. We're projecting that it's going to be paid off prior to that, and she'll have some left over from this year that we'll take a look at. And I talked to Jennifer, we'll look at her budget and her requests towards the end of this fiscal year, see what they can um, afford to pay back for, for this levy, and then the next levy, depending on when tax bills go out and distributions are. So it should be paid off well before that. We can change the date to 1130, that's fine too. It doesn't really matter. I just wanted to make sure that both of those tax distributions are in before. Her, her expenses are largely for her salary and, and the expenses related to that, and then the expenses that come out of her office. Uh, most of the money that, that she's able to provide to her needy veterans come from the federal government. They don't come from, from her office or per se or from, from that budget. So I think it should be something that uh, is easily to control. But, it's just an unfortunate situation that developed, and I think it's something that going forward we need to make sure that every department in the county is kept aware of, of where their financial situation is in regards to any checking accounts or any of those kinds of things that they have. If there are no further questions, uh, then we can entertain a motion to approve the $26,000 loan. Mr. Williams, second by Mr. Hughes. Uh, if there are no other questions or comments, then we'll put the call over. Uh, we'll have a motion to approve the $26,000 loan for the Bowers Center. Yes. Crow? Yes. Geiger? Yes. Hughes? Yes. Hughes. Yes. yes. Awful? Yes. Sure? Yes. Uh, Whitlow, yes. Williams, yes. Zimwald, yes. Alt, yes. Barron, yes. Benz. Yes. Okay. okay, thank you very much. We'll go on with the rest of our scheduled reports, beginning with policy and procedure. <clears throat> Members of the county board, your committee to whom was referred policy and procedure would beg leave to submit following report on the matters before them. Your committee met at the Administrative Center on June 1, 2023 at 9 a.m. Members present were Schur, Duquette, Barons, Alt, Offal, and Whitlow. Michael McTaggart was absent. Also present, Finance Manager Joe Johnson, County Clerk Brian Silver, ICPHD Administrator Eric Sacy, and County Board Member Doug Geiger. The meeting was called to order. It was moved by Awful and seconded by Whitlow to approve the agenda. That motion carried by a voice vote. There were no public comments. ICPHD Administrator slash EMA Director Eric Sacy reported he has been working on issuing a request for proposal for the hazard mitigation grant that was received. The weather has been abnormally calm and Sacy provided Historical information from the National Weather Service regarding flooding and drought matters. Mavis held a meeting last night. Stacy continues to attend regularly scheduled meetings. 
Stacy and County Board Chairman Schur are in the process of hiring a replacement for the EMA director position. It was moved by Barons and seconded by Duquette to enter into executive session at 9.03 a.m. under 5 ILCS 120-2-C1. The appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of specific employees of the public body. That motion carried by a voice vote. It was moved by Barons and seconded by Offal to come out of executive session at 10.34 a.m. That motion carried by a voice vote. <clears throat> County Clerk Brian Silver presented the list of liquor licenses to be approved by the committee. Silver noted DX3 doing business as the Isles and Lakeview Operations LLC doing business as Lakeview Country Club have not gotten their applications into the County Clerk's office yet. Both applications are expected within the next 24 hours. Sir sure added that not only do the list of licenses need approval, the committee also needs to consider revising the ordinance to allow for liquor sales before noon on Sundays. <coughs> Excuse me. This request was brought to the committee last month by John Martin, owner of the Topper in Watsika. Silver suggested a language revision in the ordinance that pertains to the additional $250 annual license fee for the sale of liquor before noon on Sundays. It was moved by Offal and seconded by Schur to adopt the ordinance amending the alcoholic liquor chapter of the county code, which will allow for the sale of liquor before noon on Sundays with the change suggested by the county clerk that would charge an additional license fee of $250. A roll call vote was taken. <clears throat> Ducat I, Barons I, Alt abstain. Offer I, Whitlow abstain. Sure I, motion carried. Lastly, Schubert recommended the committee address the liquor license fees at a later date. The committee chairs gave their monthly reports. Management Chairman Barons reported the committee will receive updates on the tiling project. Grant Street Drainage Project and the more. Health Chairman Balfour reported the Health Committee will hear their standard reports. The July meeting will be rescheduled. She reported the Tax Planning and Zoning Committee meeting will also need to be rescheduled in July. Judicial Chairman Whitlow reported the Committee will hear their monthly reports. The Finance Committee We'll hear their monthly reports. The committee will possibly be considering a law enforcement contract with Lola for 20 hours per week. Highway Chairman Alt reported the Highway Committee will approve a resolution to correct the salary issue with Acting Engineer Greg Perkinson. Executive Assistant Amanda Longfellow reported the completion rate for sexual harassment is at 87%. Sending notifications with payroll is up to inform employees of the annual training, specifically part-time employees and board members. Sure noted appointments for Board of Review and Board of Health will be made at the county board meeting. Correspondence was distributed to the committee. The committee reviewed the claims that was moved by Whitlow and seconded by Barons to pay the claims subject to county board approval. Roll call vote was taken. That motion carried. <clears throat> there was no old business, there was no new business. As there was no further business to come before the committee, it was moved by Barons and seconded by all to adjourn at 11.05 a.m. The motion carried by a voice vote, all of which is respectfully submitted, signed by all members present, and I move for the adoption of the report. Second by Mrs. Offal. Are there any questions or comments about the report? Seeing none, the clerk will call the roll, please. Carlin? Yes. Skyler? Yes. Hughes? Yes. McTaggart? Yes. Hoffel? Yes. Sure? Yes. Whitlow? Yes. William? Yes. Dumont? Yes. yes. All yes. Baron? Yes. Bent? Yes. And Bowers? Yes. Okay, number two. Under the policy procedure is discussion and action on an ordinance amendment chapter four. Alcoholic liquor of the county for 
I believe you have a copy of that ordinance in front of you. Basically, the changes are Paragraph B here, right in the last sentence, it talks about sale of liquor on Sunday morning before noon. So we have a motion to approve that order. Should there be a start time on that? There is in Part A of the liquor ordinance, it determines the start time, but this only refers to what is being changed. So um, all liquor licenses uh, are able to sell liquor from 6 a.m. to 1 a.m. Um, and then if they apply for the 2 a.m. license, then they can stay open until 2 a.m., but they have to pay the $250. So when the committee was discussing the change, Chairman Sure thought that adding a additional fee if they wanted to sell liquor before noon on a Sunday would be appropriate. So that's what we came up with. Any other questions? So what would be the earliest they could start selling liquor on Sunday? Six a.m. Six a.m. Yeah. That's that's under section eight. Right. If there's no further questions or comments, we'll entertain a motion to approve the ordinance. Mr. Williams, second by Mr. McTaggart. All the roll, please. All right. Geiger. Yes. Hughes? Yes. McTaggart? Yes. Awful? Yes. Sure? Yes. Whitlow? Yes. Williams? Yes. Dudenholt? Yes. Alt? Yes. Barons? Yes. Bentz? Yes. Bowers? Yes. Crow? Yes. Okay, number three on the agenda under policy and procedure committee is the discussion and action on the 2023-2024 annual liquor license application. The list of all the police in the county and the rural areas of the county have applied for liquor licenses. It's the same, I believe it's the same list as the years past. Is there any new, new applicants? Uh, well, the Lakeview Operations the LLC, the Lakeview Country Club, that's been in existence for a long time, but they do have a new owner that you guys um, approved the liquor license for maybe two months ago, or maybe it was just last month. I think it was two months ago that you approved that. Um, so this is their application for the full year now. Are there any questions or comments on this matter? Do we have a motion to approve? Mr. Williams, second by Mr. Whitlow. There's no further questions or comments. It's all over. Hughes? Yes. McTaggart? Yes. Awful? Yes. Sure? Yes. Whitlow? Yes. William? Yes. Dumont? Yes. Alt? Yes. Barron? Yes. Bunt? Yes. Bowers? Yes. Crow? Yes. And Dagger? Yes. Okay, that takes care of policy and procedure. We'll move on to the report from the Management Services Committee. Mr. Barron. Mr. Chairman, and members of the County Board, your committee to whom was referred management services and beg leave to submit the following report on matters before them. Your committee met at the Administrator Center on June 5, 2023 at 9 a.m. Members present were Barons, Bowers, Bentz, Crow, and Zumal. Also present, County Board Chairman John Schur, Finance Manager Jill Johnson, Maintenance Supervisor Chris Drake, and County Board Member Doug Geiger. The meeting was called to order. It was moved by Donna Crow and seconded by John Zumal to approve the agenda. Motion carried by a voice vote. There were no public comments. Maintenance Supervisor Chris Drake report included the following. Integrity Steel performed maintenance on jail doors. Drake said Integrity Steel also makes keys and makes replacement locks for the jail doors. Drake will talk with Sheriff Perzee about possibly having these items replaced. 
Otis Elevator utilized our service contract this past month and the matter has been resolved. There was a heat pump issue in Workforce Development Office. M&L Landscape sprayed for weeds. A new mini split system is scheduled for installation at the Animal Control Building at a cost of under 4000 The entire sign area, including the posts at the Animal Control Building, have been removed. Grass has been planted in this area. Drake requested suggestions from the committee for the former Head Start playground area. It is agreed Drake can utilize the mulch for areas around other county buildings. At this time, the fence can remain in place. Mitchell Bench requested removal of the vet veterinarian sign at the Animal Control Building due to not having a veterinarian. He also mentioned the landscaping needing touched up. Drake said he will take care of these items. The committee discussed the Grant Street drainage project is currently waiting on the FSA office to inform us on whether the property in question is wetlands. Zumwalt stated the elevations were shot and recommendations and recommended the representatives from the City of Watsika attend another meeting. Zumwalt, Zumwalt gave an update on the County Farm Tiling project stating he believes the project is complete. Paul Bowers provided the committee with multiple properties for sale in the area. County Board Chairman John Schur informed the community he has been occupied in the past couple months and now has time to focus on this project. There are a couple of options. She would like to explore and report back to the committee. He has had conversations with Mike Filster at Iroquois Memorial Hospital regarding building on their property. Also sure is looking into an addition to the maintenance shed behind the jail. Management Chairman Barron's opened painting bids for the exterior of the administrative center. Two bids were received, however, one bid was received after the deadline and will not be opened or considered. Fine lines painting, 41600 total bid, 28000 labor, and 30600 materials. It is moved by Bowers and second by Crow to approve fine lines painting bid in the amount of 41600 A roll call vote was taken, motion carried. One bid was received by Martin Development and Construction Inc. for fencing and dog doors at the Animal Control Building. However, the bid was incomplete. It was moved by Zumo and second by Crow to request complete bids for a fence and dog doors at the Animal Control Building. Motion carried by a voice vote. The committee reviewed the claims. It was moved by Zumo and second by Bowers to pay the claims. Subject to county board approval, a roll call vote was taken. Motion carried. There was no old business. There was no new business. As there was no further business to come before the committee, it was moved by fence and second by Crow to adjourn at 10.04 a.m. Motion carried, all of which is respectfully submitted and I move for its adoption. Motion on order to the Management Services Committee report. Do we have a second? Mr. Carl. Are there any questions or comments about the report? Seeing none, the clerk will call the roll, please. McTaggart? Yes. Offal? Yes. Sure? Yes. Whitlow? Yes. Williams? Yes. Zumwalt? Yes. Alt? Yes. Barron? Yes. Lentz? Yes. Bowers? Yes. Crow? Yes. Geiger? Yes. Hughes? Yes. Okay. Our committee report, Mr. Ross. Mr. Chairman, members of the County Board, <clears throat> your committee to whom was referred American Rescue Plan Act, ARPA, would beg leave to submit the following report on the matters before them. Your committee met at the Administration Center on June 5 5th at 10 a.m. Members present were Ducat, All Crow, Offutt, and John Schur, all present financial met. Also present, financial manager, Jill Johnson, county board member, Doug Geiger, Michael Johnson, <clears throat> and with the Iroquois County Youth Center, and John Bell with Watsika Ford. The meeting was called to order. It was moved by Crow and second by Offit to approve the agenda following the motion carried by a voice vote. There was no public comment. The committee began the review of the ARPA application as follows. <coughs> application 99, Watsika Park District. The committee would refer, it was informed the Watsika Park District expects to receive their bid on June 12th and will present them at the July ARPA meeting. Application 113, Bridgeland Township, the committee was informed 
that the Richmond Township is awaiting bids. Application 49, the Affordable Act, excuse me, the Affordable Arts. Crow Act asks for them to remain on the agenda until next month. Application number 61, Iroquois County Youth Center. Iroquois County Youth Center is requesting $6,000 for reimbursement of funds during the pandemic. As requested last month, Michael Johnson was with Iroquois County Youth Center, provided the committee with the documents of payroll and invoices paid for equipment upgrades. He was moved by Sher and second by Alpha to adopt a resolution awarding Iroquois County Youth Center $6,000. A roll call vote was taken. Motion carried. Application number 64, Feed and Time Foods. Presented, representatives has been invited to attend multiple meetings. Their application was removed from consideration due to the lack of participation on their end. Application number 92, Iroquois County Board. Sure noted that there are two options being explored at this time for the replacement of the board and he has recently made been made aware of an of a location in Gilman. Application number 125, Watsika Ford. <coughs> John Bell with Watsika Ford submitted an application requesting funds for an expansion. Per the committee's request, Mr. Bell has submitted a revolving loan fund application. Committee informed Mr. Bell they would prefer to wait for the revolving fund loan committee to meet their decision, make their decision for it is for the decisions made through the ARPA committee. Application 43, Oils Construction and Drainage application has been invited to attend multiple meetings. Their application was removed from the consideration to the lack of purpose participation on their end. Application 46, design home, designer homes of Gold Quest Construction. A representative was invited to attend at multiple meetings. Their application was re removed from consideration due to the lack of participation on their end. Application 48, Schomburg's fine trim. A representative has been invited to attend multiple meetings. Their application was removed from consideration due to the lack of participation on their end. Hazard pay for Iroquois County employees will remain on agenda for discussion <coughs> at another time. <clears throat> there was no old business. During the new business, finance manager Jill Johnson distributed two new ARPA application to the committee for review. Application 128, Stephen Holsapple and Susan Le Legend are requesting $30,000 for roof repairs on a building in downtown Gilman. Application 129, Sheldon United Church is requesting $48,545 for repairs. Application roof repairs. Application number 128 will be looking into further to gain further knowledge on which, which building is needed for repairs. Application 129 will be forwarded on to IEDA Director A Angel Crawford as she may be aware of the grant funding for churches. Also during new business committee set a date of July 3. 2023 to stop accepting ARPA application. This date will be publicized. Last date an application for CAMA system in the assessment's office will be submitted soon. As there is no further business to come before the committee, it is moved by Sheriff sure and seconded by all to adjourn at 10.53 a.m. Motion carried by a voice vote, all of which will be Respectfully submitted and that as for the approval of this report. Motion on the floor to approve the ARPA committee report. Do we have a second? Mr. Williams. Do we have any questions or comments about the ARPA committee report? Mr. Williams. The Milford Public Library they ever submitted an application. Has they, has the Milford Public Library.
library today or submit an application? Mm -hmm. Nope. Nope. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Any none of the clerk will call the roll, please. Awful. Yes. Sir. Yep. Willow. Yes. William. Yes. Lumalt. Lumalt. Yes. Alt. Yes. Do you want to vote on that, Charlie? <laughs> yes. yes. Okay. Uh, Barons? Yes. Bentz? Yes. Bowers? Yes. Crow? Yes. Geiger? Yes. Hughes? Yes. And McTaggart? Yes. Okay, Health Committee, Mrs. Awful. Yes, Mr. Chairman and members of the County Board, your committee to whom was referred health would beg leave to submit the following report on the matters before them. The committee met at the Administrative Center on June 6, 2023 at 9 a.m. Members present were Awful, Duke, Geiger, Hughes, and Whitlow. Also present, County Board Chairman John Schur, Finance Manager Jill Johnson, and ICPHD Administrator Eric Cece. The meeting was called to order. It was moved by Steve Hughes and seconded by Paul Ducat to approve the agenda. Motion carried by a voice vote. The committee reviewed the claims. It was moved by Whitlow and seconded by Geiger to pay the claims, subject to county board approval. A roll call vote was taken. Motion carried. There were no public comments. Finance Manager Jill Johnson reported the res registration deposit for May was $3,250. There are 19 cases currently open with four dogs, three kittens waiting for placement. Johnson said there were a lot of bite requirements on May and they are waiting on the 10-day quarantine follow-up. The animal control officers closed 15 cases in May. The closed cases consist of four dogs running loose, five bite reports, two abandoned dogs, two euthanized dogs. One dog was involved with a bite report and the other dog was extremely aggressive. One cat was stuck in a truck and one bat tested negative for rabies. Kankakee County is handling our euthanasians, and if needed, Animal Medical Center of Gilman is also available. <clears throat> ICPHD Administrator Eric Cece also comment, comment on the increase in animal bites for the month and stated all have tested negative for rabies. Cece distributed the monthly summary reports of programs. Environmental Health reported six food complaints for the month. All complaints were followed up on and none were substantiated. West Nile surveillance has begun. ICPHD distributed eight radon test kits. Community Health reported 10 animal bites. There were 22 confirmed COVID-19 cases with two cases resulting in death. There was one COVID-19 outbreak at a long-term care facility. Now that the COVID-19 pandemic has officially ended, CC noted that J&J &J vaccine is no longer offered. J&J &J was the first single-dose vaccine. Another single-dose vaccine, Novavax, is now available. A salmonella case was reported, but it was locally acquired. CC reported a new senior services professional has been hired. CC and County Board Chairman John Scherer conduct interviews for the EMA position. Health Chairman Barbara Offel noted that before the pandemic, ICPHD employees regularly attend the health committee meeting and kept the members informed of various programs offered throughout the health department. CZ said he would begin this again next month. Duquette asked for an update on ICPHD employees and grants. CZ reported a resignation received <clears throat> last month and he does not intend to fill the vacancy at this time. Grants are going well. Next month's health committee meeting is rescheduled for July 5th at 9 a.m. There was no business, there was no new business, as there was no further business to come before the committee, it was moved by Duke and seconded by Geiger to adjourn at 9.14 a.m. Motion carried by a voice vote, all of which, <coughs> excuse me, is respectfully submitted, and I move for its adoption, please. Okay, we have a motion under forward to approve the House Committee report, second by Mr. Geiger. Do we have any questions or comments on the report? Being none, the clerk will call the roll, please. Sure. Yes. Whitlow? Yes. William? Yes. Zumwalt? Yes. Alt? Yes. Barron? Yes. Bent? Yes. Bowers? Yes. Crow? Yes. Geiger? Yes. Hughes? Yes. Nick Geiger? Yes. And yes. Awful? Yes. <clears throat> okay, next is the Tax and Zoning Committee report, Mrs. Awful. 
Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the County Board, your committee to whom was referred tax and zoning would beg leave to submit the final report on the matters before them. Your committee met at the Administrative Center on June 6, 2023 at 9.30 a.m. Members present were Paul Dukat, Awful, Geiger, Hughes, and Whitlow. Also present, County Board Chairman John Schur, County Clerk Brian Suber, Treasurer Kurt Albers, Finance Manager Jill Johnson, Planning and Zoning Administrator Julie Feller, Assessment Office Deputy Clerk Teresa Price, ICPHD Administrator Eric Ceci, Robert Rice, and Melissa Halpin from Sheldon and John Carson with Tra Trajectory Energy Partners. The meeting was called to order. It was moved by Awful and seconded by Di Geiger to approve the agenda, both carried by a voice vote. The committee reviewed the claims. It was moved by Awful and seconded by Hughes to pay the claims subject to county board approval. A call, roll call <coughs> vote was taken, motion carried. There were no public comments. John Carson with Trajectory Energy Partners began his presentation to the committee. Trajectory Energy is working and has been working with Robert Rice and his family on solar energy in Iroquois County since 2018. Trajectory Energy is an Illinois-based company that focuses on community solar projects. Mr. Carson explained there are three types of solar behind the meter, uh, community solar, utility scale solar. Behind the meter refers to a home, business, or organization's ability to install solar on their roof or on their land to directly power their home or building. Community solar provides access to savings for homeowners and businesses that can't install solar on their roof by subscribing to a community solar project. Utility scale solar is a large solar system often covering hundreds of acres of land that are directly connected to high volt or higher voltage utility lines and typically serve a single customer. Mr. Carson added that the villages and cities in Iroquois County are powered by Ameren, but all of the rural areas are powered by Eastern Illinois. The proposed tributary solar is a 2MW community solar project on 16 acres in Iroquois County. The project will produce in, <coughs> excuse me, enough energy to power over 400 homes and will provide an estimated utility bill savings of $40,000 annually to community solar subscribers in the area. Prior to construction, there will be a bond in place for decommissioning. The length of the solar lease is up to 40 years. The county's ordinance does require pollinator-friendly plants. Trajectory Energy will be responsible for the mowing of the area. Mr. Carson said he is aware of the county's revised solar ordinance and a formal application will be submitted to the Planning and Zoning Department. <coughs> the department heads gave their monthly reports. County Clerk Brian Suver uh, reported the assessment office rolled to them on May 16th. Abstracts were balanced and sent to the state on the same day. Suver said they are waiting on the multiplier from the state. A press release was issued from the Treasurer's Office informing taxpayers of the delay in making and mailing tax bills. The County Clerk's Office began the purge of voter registration. There were a total of 18,099 voter registration cards mailed. The scanning project at the old courthouse museum is complete. Step two of the project, which includes naming of documents and indexing, will begin after Sewer's Zoom meeting on Wednesday. Lastly, election equipment has been ordered. Treasurer Kurt Albers reported his office is waiting on the state in order to proceed with printing tax bills. Due to the high volume of calls in the treasurer's office, a press release was issued explaining the delay in mailing tax bills. Planning and Zoning Administrator Julie Feller presented her monthly report to the committee as follows. Building permits, May 2023. Agriculture, three. Residential, nine. Wind tower, zero. Building permits, fiscal year 2023. Residential, 44. Agriculture, seven. And wind tower, zero. Building inspections, May 2023, 73. Board. Zoning Board of Appeals, none. <clears throat> Feller also distributed a draft copy of the application for in-person solicitor permit for the committee to review. The committee recommended adding a line for the applicant to include their approximate site location. The next tax zoning committee meeting will was rescheduled for July 5th at 9.30 a.m. There is no old business. There was no new business. As there was no further business to come before the committee, it was moved by Awful and seconded by Hughes to adjourn at 10.24 a.m. Motion carried by a voice vote, all of which is respectfully submitted, and I ask for its adoption.
We had a motion on the floor to approve the tax on the committee report. Do we have a second? Mr. Bowers. Do we have any questions or comments on the report? What the township is 16 acres now. Sheldon Township, yeah. It's what? Township. I would point out to the board that a number of the comments made by the director and the are not, not actually accurate. Compare them with our ordinance to see if there are some differences. They should be taken into account if they don't want to file an application. Any other questions or comments? Anyone first call the roll, please. Willow? Yes. William? Yes. Uh, Alt? Yes. Baron? Yes. Ben? Yes. Bowers? Yes. Crow? Yes. Driver? Yes. Hughes? Yes. McTaggart? Yes. Awful? Yeah. And sure. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Chairman and members of the county board, your committee to whom was referred judicial and public safety would beg leave to submit the following report on the matters before them. Your committee met at the courthouse on June 7, 2023 at 3 p.m. Members present were Whitlow, Hughes, Bentz, and Williams. Scott Watts is absent. Also present, County Board Chairman John Shuler, Sheriff Clint Brzee, Probation Supervisor Barb King, Judge Kara Bartusi, Conflict Attorney James Boyd, Circuit Clerk Lisa Hines, and ETS Director Eric Raymond. The meeting was called to order. It was moved by Raymond Williams and seconded by Steve Hughes to approve the agenda. Motion carried by a voice vote. There were no public comments. Sheriff Clint Perzee presented his monthly report to the committee as follows. Correctional Officer Blazes graduated corrections training in May, but did not pass the state test. He was scheduled to retake the test this month, but submitted his resignation today, June 7th. De Deputy Reifenberg is in police training as of May 8th, and is scheduled to graduate August 24th. Deputy Ravens is progressing through field training well and will be transitioning to his training on night, night shift this week. Deputy Heron resigned for personal reasons and accepted a position within the Health Department. Sheriff's Department received a pack of breaching tools that were provided by Nexus. Meetings have been held with Nexus and Arga Academy on behavioral issues and police calls. Physical agility and written tests were conducted for prospective, uh, prospective deputies. There were 12 applicants and six will move forward with oral interviews with the merit board and command staff. Annual maintenance has been completed on jail cell doors. <coughs> Mar and National op Opioid Settlement Funds are being utilized in the jail and for programs. 68 arrests slash intakes in May, 55 male, 12 female, one juvenile. May jail population, daily population average 23.97. Average length of stay is 55.24 days. 24, 20 male, 4 female, 1 on ankle bracelet. May medical, 9 hospital emergency room slash prompt care visits this month, 9 mental health visits, 19 nurse practitioner visits, 11 inmate medical and intake exams, 1 dentist visit, 1 IMH x-ray, 0 telehealth visits, one IMH Milford Clinic, one St. Mary's Dr. Fry, one eye doctor referred by nurse, one initiated on buprenorphine. Jail overtime for May, 84 hours paid, 83.75 hours to comp, part-time hours for May, 
65.5. Probation Supervisor Doug King reviewed the Probation and Court Services Activity Report for May with the committee. Judge Kara Bartusi discussed the recent turnover within the Public Defender's Office. Public Defender Samantha Dodds and assist, Assistant Public Defender Elsie Schilling are resigning as of June 9th. Conflict Attorney Jamie Boyd stated he is open in stepping into the Assistant Public Defender's position. He is currently drawing from an IMRF pension board based on his former occupation and Bartusi is requesting Boyd's hours not be reported <coughs> to IMRF. Boyd has assured his hours will remain at or under the 600 hours standard hours as required, required by IMRF. Bartusi also reported that she and Judge Sable are searching for replacements for Mr. Boyd's position and for the public defender's position. She believes that there are prospects and should be fully staffed by tomorrow. As long as there are no issues with Mr. Boyd's hours, the committee agreed to his hiring an assistant public defender. Circuit, Kurt, Circuit Clerk Lisa Hines distributed her monthly report for May and the committee for review. A total of $39,441.01 was received in fines and fees. $4,229.79 was received from pay court and $5,175.58 was received from iDrop. Hines also presented a resolution in regard to the Clifton to the circuit court audit. Hines explained the circuit court clerk audit is complete, however it can't be sent to the state and comptroller's office until the county audit is complete. Hines audit deadline in May is May 31st. Clifton Larson Allen advised Hines to draw up a resolution extending the audit six months. It was moved by Hughes and seconded by Mitchell Benz to approve the resolution extending the circuit clerk audit for six months. A roll call vote was taken, motion carried. <laughs> ETS Director Eric Raymond distributed his monthly report to the committee. Negotiations, negotiations met May 4th. The next negotiations committee has not been scheduled. There was no old business. There was no new business. The committee reviewed the claims. It was moved by Williams, seconded by Hughes, to pay the judicial and public safety claims, subject to county board approval. A roll call vote was taken, motion carried. As there was no further business to come before the committee, it was moved by Williams, seconded by Bentz to adjourn the meeting at 3.22 p.m. Motion carried by a voice vote. All those which is respectfully submitted and moved for its adoption. Motion on the floor to are there any questions or comments regarding the report? Seeing none, the clerk will call the roll. Yes. 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 Mr. Chairman and members of the county board, your committee to whom was referred tax and highway with big leave to submit the following report on the matters before them. Your committee met at the Iroquois County Highway Building on June 9, 2023 at 9 a.m. Members present were John Zumwalt, Donna Crow, Raymond Williams, Charlie Alt, and Chad McGinnis were absent. Also present, County Engineer Greg Perkinson, Assistant County Engineer Doug Butso, County Board Chairman John Schur, Concord Township Highway Commissioner Scott Storm, Milks Grove Township Highway Commissioner Rudy Spleer, Ford County Engineer Greg Perkinson, and Douglas Township Highway Commissioner Roger Ritzma. The meeting was called to order. There were no public comments. 
It was moved by Donna Crow and seconded by Raymond Williams to approve the agenda. Motion carried by a voice vote. The claims and financial reports for the month were reviewed. It was moved by Williams and seconded by Zumwalt to pay the bills subject to county board approval. A roll call vote was taken. Motion carried. County Highway, $140,572.12. County Bridge, $34,172.27. County Matching, $36,112.06. TBP, $131,715.57. County MFT, $106,515.25, and Township MFT, $1,801,180.60. The resolution allowing Ford County Engineer Greg Perkinson to serve as acting Iroquois County Engineer was distributed to the committee. County Board Chairman John Schur explained there was a misunderstanding which resulted in a payroll discrepancy. Initially, Mr. Perkinson was paid to be was was to be paid based upon 60% of the established salary of the Iroquois County Engineer, or $70,452. The correction will be to pay Mr. Perkinson based on 60% of the established salary of the Ford County Engineer, or $78,624. It was moved by Williams and seconded by Crow to approve the resolution allowing the Ford County Engineer to serve as acting Iroquois County Engineer with, an with a salary established based on the Ford County Engineer's salary. Motion carried by a voice vote. A petition for county aid in Milk's Grove was discussed. The total cost is expected to be $10,000, with the county highway being responsible for $5,000. It was moved by Williams and seconded by Crow to approve the petition for the county aid in Melks Grove Township. A roll call vote was taken and motion carried. Approval of a joint funding agreement for the state let construction work on section 19-005601-RS was discussed. The resurfacing job in Thawville will be an 80% federal and 20% local funds. Local funds are estimated at $108,000. It was moved by Crow and seconded by Williams. <laughs> to approve the joint funding agreement for state-let construction work on section 19-00156-01-RS. Motion carried by a voice vote. Lastly, a resolution for county matching tax funds on Iroquois County resurfacing section 19-00156-01-RS was discussed. It was moved by Williams and seconded by Zumwalt to approve the resolution for county matching tax funds on Iroquois County resurfacing section 19-00156-01-RS. A roll call vote was taken, motion carried. During new business, Crow inquired about a section of ditches in Stockholm Township that were to be cleaned out. Perkinson and Butso said they would look into the matter. Also, Crow passed on information relaying to her regarding accidents occurring at the Goodwine Schwer Road. Perkinson recommended contacting Sheriff Clint Perzee about the area. During old business, Zumwalt commented on how well the bridge replacement turned out on Township Road 121 in Concord Township. As there was no further business to come before the committee, it was moved by Williams and seconded by Zumwalt to adjourn at 9.32 a.m. Motion carried by a voice vote, all of which is respectfully submitted, and I urge your approval. We have a motion on the floor to approve the Transportation Highway Committee report. Do we have a second? Do you have any questions or comments regarding the report? Mrs. Waffle? Yes, this is for the sheriff. What has come of that? <laughs> um, nothing at this point. It's not been checked into the no. Uh 
I think the matter was just brought up last Friday, but Sheriff probably has not had an opportunity to investigate that yet. And I had a phone call in, and I, Clint is one of the people on the, I have additional information to share. And apparently, there are some, there was a plan in place at the highway department prior to um, Joel passing away, and so everybody's looking at it. Okay. Any other questions or comments regarding the report? Williams? Yes. Zumwalt? Yes. Alt? Yes. Barron? Yes. Sutton? Yes. Bowers? Yes. Crow? Yes. Ryder? Yes. Hughes? Yes. McTaggart? Yes. Offal? Yes. Sure? Yes. And Whitlow? Yes. Okay, next we have all the appointments. We have a motion to approve the appointments of Bush on the agenda. Mr. Williams, do you have a second? Mr. Hughes. Any questions or comments regarding the appointments? Is there an opening on the board of health or something? I have a, I have a candidate that has agreed to fill that that appointment will be made next month. The agreement wasn't reached until uh, soon enough to get an included in today's activity or I will be going forward today. Mr. Crow, did you have that a was my question? Yeah. Okay. Any other questions or comments about the appointment? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That motion passes the next to be the claim. Do you have a motion to approve the claims? Mr. Whitlow, second by Mr. Hughes. Are there any questions or comments regarding the claim? And now the clerk will call the roll. Zumwalt? Yes. Alt? Yes. Barron? Yes. Bent? Yes. Bowers? Yes. Crow? Yes. Geiger? Yes. Hughes? Yes. McTaggart? Yes. Awful? Yes. Sir? Yes. Whitlow? Yes. And William? Yes. Is there any old business to come before the board? Is there any new business to come before the board? Do we have a motion to adjourn? Mr. Bowers, second by Mr. All. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign.